that a weakness is that because my sin has been brought into remembrance, my son is dead. How many people in this world or in this house who say, I was thinking that because of what I have done, I deserve what I'm going through. They, they, they even forget to say, Satan, you are a thief. The Bible said the thief came to do what? To steal, kill, and what? And destroy. But Jesus Christ came so that we can have what? Life and what? And life in abundance. I want to put it to you this morning that there are things that we have lost because we have agreed with the enemy. We believe that because of what we have done, we deserve to lose. I want to put it to you. Our God is a merciful God. When you think like that, you are saying to yourself, I'm alive because of the good things that I'm doing. And I'm losing because of the bad things that I've done. You have no control over your life. Hallelujah. I want you to think like that. Once you think like that, you have no control. Of, you are not alive because of your good deeds. You are not alive because of the good things that you have done or that you are planning to do. You are alive because of his mercies and grace. You are alive because of the finished works of Calvary. So on the same note, you should also believe that what you have, you, you are not keeping what you have because of the goodness of your deeds. You have what you have because of the mercies and the grace of God. Hallelujah. It is a lie from hell for you to accept the losses. It is easy to blame yourself. Am I talking to someone? It is easy to say, what have I, what I have to do, O oh man of God? If you come to bring my sin to remembrance and kill my job and kill my finances and kill my family and kill my joy, it has nothing to do with what you can do. Listen to me. It has nothing to do with what you can or cannot do. It has everything to do with your maker. You did, how many of you write, wrote a letter to God asking him to leave? None. How many of you prayed a prayer to God when you were zero days old asking him for long life? None. None. You, you did not. When you were zero days, you could not pray. You did not. God gave you the grace of life and everything that pertains to life. When the enemy steals, don't sit back and relax and condemn yourself and say, I deserve this. It's a lie from hell. Am I talking to someone? Say Satan has no authority over anything that concerns my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the man of God also lost it. He said, God, why have you bring this tragedy? And in all these things, when the, when the woman complained, God said nothing. Nothing happened. When the man of God complained, nothing happened. God said nothing. But the moment he started praying, am I talking to someone? The moment he started praying, the Bible said, then we see God appearing in the picture. If you can, if you can read uh, verse 22, it says, then the Lord heard 
the voice of Elijah. And the soul was restored back to the child. Hallelujah. There is a voice that God is waiting to hear from you. There is a voice that God is waiting to hear from someone we have lost this morning. God is saying, I do, I'm tired of hearing your complaints. I'm tired of hearing your justification why you have to lose. I want you to stand in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ and begin to claim and command everything that you have lost, especially in the area of your finances. I want you to start believing God for the restoration in that area. I want you to open your mouth and begin to, begin to say, Father, I, have, I was not supposed to have lost my car. I was not supposed to have lost the tires of my car. I was not supposed to have lost the money that I used to travel. That money that I've used to travel belongs to me and my family. It was part of the schemes of the enemies to steal from me. That is the voice that God is waiting to hear. Batteries are all. The media team is sleeping. Let there be life. Okay. You see, it's revived. Amen. So, then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. Say, I declare and decree that the Lord will hear my voice as I cry for restoration. Say my finances shall be revived. My finances shall be restored. My joy shall be restored. My health shall be restored. If you believe that, praise the Lord. You can do better than you can do better than that. You can do better than that. You need to do like somebody who's being restored. You need to do like somebody who is being restored. Hallelujah. If we go, so you see, there was a delay when the woman blamed herself. When the men of God blame God. But when he, they both came back to their senses and believed God, there was supernatural speed. The son was restored back to life immediately. Yeah, 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 you're missing it. The son was restored back to life when? Say immediately. There will be an immediately unction in your life. There will be a sudden unction in your life. The f number one, write, write, write this one down. Write this one down. How do I get to the immediate unction? How do I get to the immediate unction? Number one, depend on the cross. The object of your faith should be the cross. The reason why the woman saw her sins before God, she did not see the God of the man of God. <laughs> she saw her weaknesses, her sins. 
we as the born again church, whatever that the first thing, whatever that you go through in life, the first thing that you should sing is the cross. I'm not talking to someone. The first thing that should come to your spirit, man, is the cross. Before your weaknesses, before anything that you could have done or could not do, the first thing that should come to you should be the finished works of Calvary. Should be what Jesus has done on the cross for you. Number two, if there's anything, if there's anything in your heart that makes you believe that it has distanced you with, it has created a distance between your God, repent. Why, why do we start with the cross? The cross is the source of restoration. When you repent, the cross is available to restore you. Am I talking to someone? The cross is available to do what? Say, say to restore me. Repent. Number three. I, I love number three. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith in God, have faith in what Jesus Christ has done for you, have faith in what Jesus Christ is still going to do for you. Number four, because of your faith, open your mouth, declare what you want to see happening. Open your mouth, and declare what you want to see happening. God wants to see the voice filled with faith. He doesn't want to hear the words of doubt. He wants to hear the voice filled with his word. Number five, which is the last one before we continue. Your declarations should be filled with the word of God. Not your pains. Not your doubts. Declare what you are believing God for. For example, it is written that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. want. He restores what? My soul. Soul be restored. Soul be restored. Hallelujah. Let, let, let us hold it there. Let us go to Second Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 9, for Jonathan's sake. Say covenant. And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, At your service. And the king said, Is there still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan who is, lame, who is lame in his feet. So the king said to him, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, indeed he is in the house of Micah, the son of Amiel in Lodaba. Lodaba means the place of what? Nothingness. The king then King David sent and brought him out of the house of Machi, the son of Amin from Lodaba. Now when Mephobosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his faith and prostrated, and prostrated himself. Then David said, Mephibosheth, and answered, Here is your servant. So David said to him, Do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for your father's sake. And it will restore to you all the land of, your, of Saul, your father. And you shall eat bread at my table. I will restore to you. Number one, when God calls you for restoration, 
He doesn't care about your current state. Mephibosheth was lame in his feet. Lodaba means a place of nothingness, a place of desolate. A place, Lodaba was a place where nothing grows. When um, it was a place of unfruitfulness. You see, before restoration, you need to make a decision that you are walking out from the place of unfruitfulness. Am I talking to someone? Lodaba is a place of unfruitfulness. What are the places of unfruitfulness? You need to have an inward look. What is it that I'm doing that is making me unfruitful? What is my Lodaba moment? Am I disobedient? Am I prayerless? Am I wordless? How is my, how, how is my study of the word? How, what is my language? Do I speak life? Do I speak death? When I comment, in my, when I speak about myself, what, what, is, what is the first word that comes out of my, of my mouth? Am I speaking life unto myself? You know, many of us have created our own Lodaba. We have become unfruitfulness, one, because of character. When a character, when your character doesn't allow you to be fruitful, there will be no restoration. Am I talking to someone? Say, neighbor, get out of Lodaba. Say, there is a king's table waiting for you. Say, get out of Lodaba. Hallelujah. Mephibosheth came. I want to put you number two. Mephibosheth came. When he came, he did not come in the name. He did not approach the king in the name of his previous grandfather, Saul. He said, David, King David, here am I. Your servant has arrived. Pride. Pride can keep you loadable. Okay. Yeah. I keep working up pride. The amen is that thing. I did not date him. I did not date him. The amen is that thing. I did not date him. I did not air time. These amens are dateless, no air time. How many of you want to be in the place of restoration? Yeah. I, think, I think we need to talk about this. Hallelujah. Yeah. We need to talk about this. We need to talk about this. You know, the, by everything that is written in the Bible is for a purpose. Mephibosheth came. The Bible said he laid prostrate before David. It was the sign of what? Say submission. He took off the garment of what? Pride. That's how you deal with your Lodaba. When you are out of Lodaba, the first thing that you do, submission. Okay. Okay. Don't worry. I love you so much. I'm not going to stop because you are not saying amen. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Amen. And after he laid down, David said, I'm going to restore to you all. Listen to me. Yeah, yeah, you're not here. You're not here. All. Say all. all. I'm going to restore to you all. Let us reverse. Can we just rewind a little bit? Mephibosheth is hearing hear, hear that. King David is calling him. He said, King David, I don't know you. I don't recognize you as my king. Let's just assume that is his response. I don't recognize you as my king. You can stay with your kingship in your palace. I will stay here in Loda, but I'm fine. No. Or... Let's rewind back again. Mephibosheth could have said, 
how could I, how can I come since I'm lame? So, he had a lot of what? Excuses not to submit. He had a lot of excuses not to be where he's being summoned. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Let us jump. He prepares a table for me. In the presence of what? My cups what? When a table is prepared, someone goes to the table. Okay. If you want to be where the table is, let us look at our loadable characters. Somebody has to go to the table. You can eat your seed and not sow. You will remain in where? In Lodaba. You can, you can decide not to pray and sleep. You will remain where? In Lodaba. You can, decide, you can decide not to listen to the word of God and not obey the word of God. You will remain where? In Lodaba. The fact that you in Lodaba won't stop David from eating. Am I talking to someone? The fact that you choose to stay in Lodaba, it won't stop David from what? From eating. The king's table will always be what? Say, be said. Lift up your hands. Say, I'm ready for my restoration. Say, I mean, say I'm ready for my, for my restoration. Say, the, say, say every power that is taken advantage of my situation. I renounce you and denounce you. Today, right now, I'm rising irrespective of my circumstances. I'm going back to the king's table. King Jesus has been waiting for me. Say, I'm a partaker of what is being laid up on the table. If you believe it, praise God for that. If you believe it, praise God for that. If you believe it, praise God for that. Hallelujah. You see, we're going to rewind back again. There is someone who needs to know your name. King David did not know that Mephibosheth existed until the servant Ziba knew that there is Mephibosheth. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, from today onwards, God is raising up your divine destiny help us for the sake of your restoration. There is no restoration without divine destiny help us. Somebody has to know your name. I'm declaring and decreeing right now that your name is set up in the spiritual realm. Someone will locate your name. Someone will call your name to for someone in authority, you will be put back into remembrance. Somebody will remember you for the sake of your restoration. If you believe it, praise God. If you believe it, praise God. If you believe it, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Mordecai once saved the king. There is, a, there is a night that the king could not sleep. As he was going through the chronicles, he read of a, play, uh, 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 of a man who saved his life. 
And he asked a question. What has been done for this man who has done this great deed for the king? And the answer was, nothing was done. I don't know, but for a season, the king did not know that there is someone who once saved his life. For a season, the king did not know that there is someone who has saved him secretly without looking for recognition. I want to declare to you this morning that you have been saving God for all these years, not looking for recognition. You have been giving, you have been sowing, you have been active. I'm declaring and decreeing that is your season for remembrance. You shall be remembered for what you have done. Am I talking to someone? You shall be remembered for what you have done. Restoration will locate you. You might be telling yourself, but for the last 10 years, I've been going to church, nothing has been happening to me. I've been doing this, nothing has happened to me. It is your season for restoration. It is your season for restoration. Am I talking to someone? Say, I declare and decree, I am restored back to my rightful position. I shall be where God wants me to be. I shall have what God wants me to have. You are restored to your rightful position. Can the church stand up? I would like us to pray. I would like us to, I would like us to make some declaration. I would like us to make some declaration. One of the most painful feelings in a man's life is to be hopeless. Where when nothing seems to be coming together. You look at your situation, you feel like God has deserted you. I want to put it to you this morning. We serve a God of restoration. You are going to declare restoration. Amen. Amen. Say, I declare and decree that every power that has been taking advantage of my family circumstances to torment my life, I command you, live now in Jesus' name. Command that spirit to live. Command that spirit to live. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. You know everything that has been taken care of your family advantage. It's time for your restoration. It's time for your restoration. It's time for your restoration. I'm declaring and decreeing that you are restored. I'm declaring and decreeing that you are restored. Command, 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 command.